Welcome to CIS 579, Technology of E-Business. This is Chapter 1 out of our textbook by Turbin, uh, Electronic Commerce, a Managerial and Social Networks Perspective, 2012. The learning objectives for this chapter are to define electronic commerce and describe its various categories, to describe and discuss the content and framework of e-commerce, to describe the major types of e-commerce transactions, to discuss e-commerce 2.0, to describe social commerce and social software, to understand the elements of the digital world, to describe the drivers of e-commerce as they relate to business pressures and organizational responses, to describe some of the e-commerce business models, describe the benefits of e-commerce to organizations, consumers, and society as a whole, and to list and describe some of the major limitations of e-commerce. So what is e-commerce and how does it relate to e-business? Well, it really depends on who you talk to, what text you're referring to. They all kind of have their own definitions and their own relationship between these two concepts. But in general, e-commerce is a subset of e-business. E-business is a broader uh, perspective of e-commerce. E-commerce in, in this text is defined as the process of buying, selling, or exchanging products, services, or information via computer. So it's that, that ability to digitize products or digitize part of the process to deliver a better service. E-business takes a larger perspective of, of e-commerce and applies it to not just transactions of buying and selling goods, but also a lot of the back office functions that occur within an organization in terms of managing the relationships with customers, managing, managing the relationships with different parts of an organization, HR, for example, manufacturing, sales, etc. Um, and, and so e-business uh, e tends to, to take on a larger scope. Uh, it also deals with external relationships of, of organizations dealing with, with other organizations, uh, having to, to manage relationships with the government, um, suppliers, etc. One of the major concepts that we can, can consider when we're talking about e-commerce uh, uh, organizations is the degree of digitization that they, they use in their business processes and, and to create and, and deploy or develop and, and uh, sell their products or, or their services. Um, in, in general, you can, can kind of classify those organizations into to one of three. And it really kind of ranges on a spectrum of pure versus partial e-commerce to, to no e-commerce at, at all. Um, so in general, you've got brick and mortar organizations. Those are the old organizations that you're used to. You used to, to, to go down to the convenience store or go down to the store um, and buy your good or your, or your service. You had a physical location. You'd see people. You could try things out. You could touch them. You could smell them. You could feel them. Um, and that's your brick and mortar. There's something concrete about it, something that you can reach out and grab. On the other end of the spectrum are virtual organizations, organizations that only exist online. Everything is delivered online. Everything is produced online. A good example might be, um, at least to a certain degree, Amazon.com, uh, where, you, where you're purchasing a book, uh, an e-book from them. Um, so the, the order process is done online. The product is delivered uh, to you across the Internet, across your network connections. You consume that by reading it through a monitor or, or listening to it if it's an audio book. So that's a virtual organization. Everything is done online, or at least that aspect of, of Amazon is a virtual organization. Uh, Netflix is probably another good example of a virtual organization, at least as it relates to their streaming service. Uh, and then kind of a hybrid of the two are click and mortar, or click and brick organizations. Um, those are organizations that usually kind of have, a, have a, a one foot in each camp. Um, so they'll have a physical presence, but they'll also have a virtual presence. Uh, Walmart's a good example. You can, can certainly go to walmart.com, make purchases, um, consume some things from, uh, from uh, Walmart uh, online, yet at the same time they have a physical location where you can go and you can, can purchase things. A graphical way of looking at that uh, might be able to be visualized by thinking about it as a cube. Um, and really you're looking at it basically on three different dimensions. You're looking at the delivery method 
Uh, so how is a, is a good or service delivered to you? Is it, is it physically delivered or can it, can it be delivered uh, digitally? Um, the order process. How is how's the order process conducted? Is it done online? Do you have to go in someplace and, and physically order something? Uh, and then how's the order actually processed? Can Again, can that be done digitally or is it something that physically has to be moved from point A to point B? Um, and, and so that's a, a good way to kind of think about that. And you can look at the, the image and kind of get a pretty good idea. You can see in the top right corner where you might have a pure e-commerce organization. That's one that where the processing is done digitally, delivery is done digitally, ordering is done digitally. And then at the other extreme, physical, uh, uh, traditional commerce, the, uh, the product or service has to be ordered in person, uh, some kind of physical process. Uh, delivery shipment is done, you know, some kind of physical means. It's delivered via UPS or, or however. Uh, and then the processing is done physically as well. A book is manufactured uh, through a, a manufacturing process. Some general concepts that we need to keep in mind are, are some basic definitions. So an electronic marketplace or e-marketplace is an online marketplace where buyers and sellers meet to exchange goods, services, money, or information. It's really no different than a traditional marketplace where you might meet to exchange goods and services. Think of a flea market. Uh, where you meet up with various uh, sellers. You go to a, a, a mall, you've got the same type of, of, of situation going on. A place where you can go and exchange goods and services. There's different organizations that are selling things. There's different people that are buying things. It's a place to bring together buyers and sellers uh, to facilitate trade. Uh, another concept or, or term is an intranet. An intranet is, think of the internet. Everybody's pretty comfortable with what that is and how it works. It's a collection of different networks where we're sharing resources, we're sharing access to different documents. An intranet is exactly the same thing. The only difference is, is it's closed off to the outside world. It's limited to our organization, to our government, to our corporation, to, to whatever that wants to limit access to that resource. We take advantage of consumers understanding of internet technologies, the use of web browsers and the various protocols and various other internet tools that we have available to us, uh, but it's closed off from the rest of the world to help protect that information and keep it internal. An extranet is very similar, same general concept, the only difference is, is we open it up to the outside world in a limited fashion. So for example, we might have an organization that wants to open up part of their system to their suppliers, so their suppliers can log into their system and determine when their you know, certain stock levels fall below a certain level, so they know when to replenish that good. Uh, so it, it takes advantage of our familiarity with internet technologies, but it limits the access to the outside world to just those who have access to it, usually by a username and password. So why are we interested in studying e-commerce? Well, as you can tell, the um, the growth of e-commerce as part of our economy is growing year after year. It's becoming more and more of a significant portion of our economy. What's interesting to note is the stuff that we actually see as consumers really is only the tip of the iceberg. And we'll talk about that a little bit more here in just a couple of slides. Okay, so we talked about a formal definition of e-commerce and what it is and, and its relationship with e-business. But to really kind of dive in and get a little dirtier in, in terms of what it really consists of, we really kind of need to have some kind of a framework or some kind of way of looking at the different components that make up e-commerce. And the book proposes one that has basically five support areas, people, public policy, marketing, and advertising, support services, and business partnerships. So when they talk about people, they're talking about buyers and sellers and, and intermediaries, people that bring together those buyers and sellers. As far as public policy, as an e-commerce site or organization, we're going to have to think about the taxes that we might have to pay, uh, what jurisdictions we operate in, legal and privacy issues, things of, uh, of that nature. For marketing and advertisement, we've got to think about doing market research. Who are our customers going to be? Where can we make, uh, make money from? Uh, how are we going to deal with promotions and web content? For support services, we've got to think about logistics. How are we going to get our physical products delivered to our customers? 
even if it's a, just a digital product, how are we going to process our payments? You know, those are things that we have to, to work out or issues that we have to work out. And then lastly, business partnerships, things like joint ventures and affiliate programs and, and things of that nature. How are we going to come up with uh, the most efficient way of, of, of getting our products that we can deliver to our customers? One of the ways we can think about e-commerce is by the nature of the relationships of the transactions between partners, between participants. Um, and though there are more relationships that, that, that exist, the two that are commonly uh, discussed are business to business and business to consumer. Now, most of the time we tend to think of as consumers the business to consumer relationship. Um, it's really a pretty small part of the market, about 7%, maybe a little more than 7% of the overall uh, e-commerce market. Um, but that's the, the relationship that we typically are a part of, and so that's what we see. When we go to Amazon, or we go to Walmart.com, things like that, we are participating in that business to consumer relationship. One that makes up a much bigger uh, piece of that pie is the business to business uh, uh, relationship between buyers and sellers. Uh, a lot of times businesses purchase from other businesses. They purchase their supplies, they purchase their raw materials in an e-commerce environment. Those purchases typically are many more, there typically are many more of those, those transactions, and those transactions are typically much, much larger. So it represents a bigger part, a uh, bigger piece of that pie. So here's a slide that kind of illustrates the different components that uh, um, are graphically kind of illustrates how you might start to think about um, some of the different components that it takes to uh, make up that framework for e-commerce. Perhaps some lesser known relationships are the B to B uh, to C relationships. For example, a business to business to consumer relationship, which is a little bit more representative of a traditional supply chain. Uh, so a business may sell to another business and that other business has their own set of customers who then ultimately sell to a consumer. Uh, there's also a, a consumer to business model. Uh, again, these tend to be lesser known models, but they, there's certainly examples out there. For example, in the consumer to business uh, uh, model, you might think of some, uh, an organization like Priceline.com, where an individual is trying to sell, so to speak, um, their purchase of, uh, uh, of rates on a room or, or travel. Intra-business e-commerce refers to um, internal organizational activities where you might have one, one organization or one department within an organization conducting activities um, that involve some kind of transactions or exchanges of goods and services within the organization with other departments within that organization. Uh, business to employees uh, e-commerce models represent a, or is, is a model in which an organization delivers services, information, or products to its to its individual employees. So we may sell, for example, or not sell per se, but deliver information uh, through human resources about various insurance packages, um, various other benefits packages to our employees using e-commerce technologies. Yet another category is the consumer to consumer market, a model in which Consumers sell directly to other consumers. eBay is probably the best example uh, uh, for a consumer to consumer market. You create an account, you uh, post a product that you want to get rid of, you want to sell, you want to uh, uh, send out into the world, and other consumers log in in that electronic market space to you know, bid on that particular product. So that's a, an example of consumer to consumer market. Um, there's also some other probably even lesser well-known uh, um, categories, at least this next one, collaborative commerce, an e-commerce model in which individuals or groups communi communicate to or elaborate, collaborate online to um, develop a good or a service uh, together. E-government e is really just the application of some of these e-commerce technologies in a government setting to be able to provide services to citizens, to uh, uh, the people, their constituents. Uh, you see this both at the, the or you see this at the local, state, and, and federal levels, where you can log in, you can submit taxes, you can pay fines, you can pay your water bill, things of that nature. So here's kind of a graphical representation of what we were just discussing: all those various relationships 
between businesses and consumers, and government employees, and the relationships of, of the various transactions that, that can exist between them. The world of e-commerce has really been around for quite some time, uh, before the internet really was, was commonly commercially available. Uh, for example, EDI was used, electronic data interchange was used, uh, by ba basically by large corporations, large organizations to be able to uh, easily electronically exchange billing information uh, and, and things of that nature. But the proprietary nature of it really kind of pushed out the little guys, pushed out obviously consumers and, and small businesses. Uh, as the internet became, it began to gain a foothold and become more popular, you started to see organizations with a presence online and this push towards being able to conduct transactions online and you really saw the birth of of what modern day e-commerce is all about being able to conduct those transactions those purchases the exchange of billing information etc all online through the, the through the internet um, the interdisciplinary nature of e-commerce is really it's really something that probably was not recognized early on in the early days of, of the internet e-commerce model or models uh, and that's probably what led to the dot-com bust that we saw in between 2000, uh, 1999 and 2001 in, in that, that area um, but it's now it's the recognition of that that makes uh, conducting e-commerce online much much more uh, um, practical and appealing uh, some of those interdisciplinary um, fields that are drawn upon, things like accounting, uh, business law, computer science, uh, management information systems, marketing, finance, human resources. We draw on all of these different areas because whether it's online or it's, it's a physical organization, we really rely on a lot of those same disciplines to be able to run a business. Um, the next bullet, the, the Google Revolution. In the early days of e-commerce, you had a lot of different uh, organizations trying to be um, really kind of the go-to organization to be able to, to uh, search for things, find products, find goods and services, and things like that. Google, however, did a better job. Um, they really have kind of got their fingers in a lot of different pies uh, because of their ability to search uh, so effectively, and as a result, they really kind of dominated a lot of uh, a lot of, of the the market. A uh, relatively new term, F commerce, is really kind of paying homage to Facebook specifically, but really refers to the general idea of marketing goods and services through social media, whether it be Facebook or Twitter, uh, Tumblr, etc. So over the years, there's been e-commerce failures. That's just the reality, and hence the the dot com bust that we saw. Um, some of those examples, eToys, uh, Webvan, Boo, were all examples of, of organizations that really didn't have a very good business model going into their, their development. Um, survey by Strategic Direction in 2005 found that 62% of dot-coms lacked financial skills and 50% had little experience with marketing. It's really no wonder that we had failures. Um, catastrophic failures if you will uh, they simply were not viable businesses the idea was that if you could put E in your name you were going to be successful and the reality was that if you were not paying attention to that interdisciplinary nature of, of business whether it's e-business or not it's tough to make a viable business model out of that having said that there have obviously been some, some successes as well uh, companies like Amazon, eBay uh, have, have really done very well. Facebook, um, Google, they've all done very well. You've also seen some click and order stores uh, that have, have been able to kind of develop their own little niches and, and be able to, to sell both face to face as well as online uh, in that type of environment. Uh, examples of some of those are Target Online, IBM, Mattel, things like that. As far as the future of e-commerce, it's really kind of hard to specifically map out what the future is going to be. But I, I think most people agree that, that the Internet's here to stay, that e-commerce is here to stay. Um, one of the things that I think is interesting, in, uh, interest in the online shopping is considerably lower 
amongst the very young and, and the oldest. Um, Generation X tends to have the highest uh, uh, percentage of, of, uh, of that group that tend to shop online. Generation Y is actually lower, which is kind of interesting. Um, having said that, with forecasts of approximately 2 billion or, or estimates of about 2 billion people on the internet in 2010, and an estimate of about 50% of all internet users shopping online, that's a pretty big marketplace. So the future of e-commerce is, is pr on pretty solid ground. The next few slides really talk about e-commerce uh, in terms of an e-commerce 2.0. And this is kind of a, a holdover from traditional software editions or, or upgrades. You know, our first edition is 1.0 or point something, and we move to the next edition is 2.0, 3.0, etc., etc. Um, so e-commerce 2.0 implies that we we've you know had a major upgrade, and in a sense we have. We've gone from just basic websites trying to sell goods and services to really try to incorporating more of that social uh, interaction, uh, more of a personal experience, uh, something that's more interactive. And so we see some of the major ideas behind this, uh, being social computing and the web 2.0. Social, social computing is an approach aimed at making the human computer interface more natural. So being able to see things, that, you know, have things laid out on the screen that, that are much more appealing to us as users, uh, much easier to navigate, very user friendly. Web 2.0 refers to the second generation of internet based services that lets people collaborate and share information online in new ways. So social networking sites, wikis, where we can collaborate on writing an article, the different ways that we can communicate via text and, and uh, social media, uh, things, of that uh, uh, things of that nature, and folksonomies. Social networks are a category of internet applications that help connect friends, business partners, or individuals with specific interests by providing free services such as photo presentation, email, blogging, and so on using a variety of tools. So obviously some of the examples are things like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. Uh, and again, these are ways to, to share things, share information, share photos, share concepts, ideas, shopping experiences, etc. Uh, an example of this that I think uh, is kind of interesting, I don't necessarily agree with his example, but my stepson, for example, is a movie enthusiast. Um, and he basically says that Adam Sandler is out of work. He can't make bad movies anymore. Why? Because during the first showing, people go and watch it, and they see how bad it is, and they immediately start tweeting how bad those movies are. It's a way to get the word out very quickly, and so nobody goes to see the movie anymore. Um, and that's the power of social networking. That's the power of uh, social commerce and, and the effect that it can have. Social Networking Service, or SNS, is a service that builds online communities by providing an online space for people to build free home pages and that provides basic communication and support tools for conducting different activities in a social network. It's kind of a specific instance or a, a specific example of a type of social networking. It's a little bit more detailed than just social networking in, in general. Um, Facebook is an example. LinkedIn are, is an example that they are a little bit more comprehensive than some specific examples like Twitter, which is just used for communication. Um, it really allows you to develop much more of a, of a complete profile or, or picture of who you are as an individual and to be able to communicate uh, and share things with other individuals that are part of or that are, are members of that social networking service. Social networking is really just the act of participating in that social network, the creation or sponsoring of a social network service, and any activity such as blogging done in that social network. Enterprise social networks are really just business-oriented social networks that can be public or they can be private. Um, I've already mentioned LinkedIn, for example. It tends to be more have more of a business professional orientation to it. As far as social commerce, the e-commerce activities conducted in social networks and or by using social software. Uh, examples of that include things like Carnival Cruise Line, who sponsors a social networking site to attract cruise fans. It gives them a place to come and organize 
and create groups that might be interested in going on a cruise. Um, so it's a way to, to use e-commerce technologies or merge e-commerce technologies with social networking technologies or sites in, in order to drive sales and drive profits. Another place where we can see e-commerce 2.0 technologies is, or in, from social commerce is in virtual worlds. Uh, so probably the best example of a virtual world is Second Life. A virtual world is, is really nothing more than a, a 3D computer-based simulated environment. And it allows us to create various avatars to represent ourselves as, a, a, as an individual in this virtual world. And we can travel from place to place in this virtual world. We can check out different organizations that have virtual world presences. Um, we can look at different goods and services that they offer. We can talk about these, these goods and services in this virtual environment and, uh, and make decisions, make purchases in that virtual world that bleed over into our, our physical world. The book gives an example, which I think is pretty interesting, uh, about how students can make money in, in a virtual world simply by being familiar with the uh, being familiar with uh, um, these types of technologies. As far as some of the major tools of the web 2.0, uh, wikis, RSS feeds, blogs, microblogs, such as Twitter, uh, these are some of the tools that are, are very common in a web 2.0 environment. Gone are the days of static web pages where you had to manually go back in and, and add content uh, as a web developer. In a lot of cases today, the content is generated by the users, and that's what's really indicative of Web 2.0 technologies, is we're filling a lot of our content by users that are out that are using our websites, that are contributing to reviews and, and writing about our, or our uh, a review of our, of our restaurant, or a review of a movie, or of a book, and things of that nature. So a lot of that content is generated by our users. So e-commerce or e-business is one facet of a digital economy. The digital economy is an economy that is based on digital technologies, including digital communications networks, so email and Twitter and all those types of things, um, com computers, software, other related information technologies. It's also called the internet economy, the new economy, or the web economy. Digital enterprise is a new business model that uses IT in a fundamental way to accomplish one or more of the three basic objectives to reach and engage customers more effectively. So we want to be able to find customers and be able to target them specifically. And IT or, or information technology is, is particularly well suited for that. We can create custom marketing messages to each individual user. And that's, that's of great value to companies. That's why Google, uh, Google has been so successful. Uh, to boost employee productivity and improve operating efficiency. Computers are very good at that. They, they help us to improve efficiency uh, tremendously. And to use converge, uh, converged communication and computing technology in a, in a way that improves business processes. The idea of convergence or um, combining email and telephone calls and, and all of our different touch points that we have with consumers into, into a common way so that we have we know how we're dealing with our customers and, and discussing topics and answering questions with our, our customers. In many cases this is done through some type of a corporate portal, a, a gateway through which employees, business partners, and the public as a whole can interact uh, with an organization. Now all of this relies on the fact that we have some sort of digital society. We need a society that is very comfortable using these technologies Otherwise, the rest of it's for naught. The business environment is changing largely because there's been a shift in power. Um, largely before uh, e-commerce, most of the power in a transactional relationship existed with the seller. The seller had information. The seller knew about the quality of the product, how much it cost to make, things of that nature. The internet and e-commerce technologies have shifted that power considerably in favor of the consumer. The consumer is able to do a lot more research than they, were, than they used to be able to do. They're able to, to compare prices and shop around. Uh, so it, makes it, it, it shifts a lot of that power away from the manufacturer, away from the producer of the service, to that of the consumer. And this creates certain business pressures. Businesses operate within a, a business environment. In that environment, presents both uh, uh, 
has both business pressures and has business uh, opportunities. Now those opportunities are really kind of, uh, of or I say those opportunities, those problems and those opportunities are addressed by our company um, by the various business processes that they have in, K in place, the core competencies of that particular organization, and consistent with their mission and their goals and their, their strategies, their plans of that organization, they're able to respond in some fashion to those business pressures and those business opportunities. That response is largely facilitated by the support of e-commerce. So what are some of those major capabilities of e-commerce? Well, they're the ability to conduct transactions very efficiently. Uh, we can get the, co uh, the cost of each transaction down significantly. Global reach, we can you know, now conduct transactions really around the world. You can have small companies or individuals selling goods and, and services really all, all around the world. Um, anytime, anywhere, once our website's up and running, it runs 24-7. It doesn't sleep. It doesn't strike. Uh, easy to find product and vendor information. Again, some of that shift in power to, to the consumer. We almost have to do it now, though, as an organization to be able to compete with our, our competitors because they're providing that information. Uh, so there's a lot of different capabilities that e-commerce help uh, uh, facilitate in terms of transactions. So here's kind of a graphical representation of that competitive cycle, that competitive model. Uh, you can see there to the left the, the, the business environment that, that, ha that creates opportunities, creates pressures or, or problems for an organization. Um, our organization is really driven by our, our mission, our goals, our, our strategy, and our plans. Um, and, and those are what between the problems and the opportunities and those missions and goals, etc., those lead us to develop uh, various business processes and, and develop core competencies to address those issues. Hopefully, we're able to actually measure that and our performance levels, and then that performance level then impacts our mission, our goals, etc. And an illustration of the major capabilities that contribute to the growth of e-commerce: again, efficient transactions, global reach. <clears throat> anytime, anywhere, convenience, etc. E-business is no different from any other business in the sense that you have to have some sort of business model, business model in place to be successful. Uh, the goal is to make money after all, right? Well, if, if that's the goal, the best way to, to recognize that goal is to make sure that you have a solid business model going into an endeavor. A business model is really nothing more than a method of doing business by which a company can generate revenue to sustain itself. And there's several different uh, business models that have been applied to, to e-commerce uh, to the e-commerce environment. The structure and properties of a, of a business model are that it needs to com consist of several different things. One is the revenue model. In other words, how are we going to make money? Where is the money going to come from? So, you know, we can can uh, can uh, we can gather revenue in a variety of different ways. We can have a, have subscription fees, for example, and you see this for uh, um, some websites that, that have information, things like a, a newspaper sometimes will have a revenue-based model. Uh, advertising models, where the website access is free, but there are various banner ads. An example of this might be Google, um, where you have targeted ads based on what you're, what you're searching for. It also has to be a value proposition. The benefits the company can derive from using e-commerce and the value that customers derive from, from using a particular uh, e-commerce site. Um, so say for example, let's go back to Google for just a, a, a second. If Google was not producing um, the volume of hits that they, they produce, there'd be a little value in advertising uh, on their site of, of targeting having targeted ads on their site because there'd be little little traffic. The benefit comes from the volume of traffic that they get. That's why you want to place banner ads on their site when you have that opportunity. Um, and then there's the functions of a business model. The actual functions that uh, of a business model include things like uh, describing the major business processes of the company and describing the business models, uh, formulating the venture's competitive strategy, and its long-term plans, articulating a customer value proposition, etc. These are all things that make up a, a business plan or a business model. 
um, and, and they need to be considered in the e-commerce environment as well as uh, any other type of business environment. So here's a graphical view of some of the, the common revenue models. Uh, the transaction fee model where you, somebody's charged a percentage for every time there's a transaction. Uh, credit cards operate on this model where they'll take a small percentage of each transaction and that's how the, the bank makes money off the transactions. Subscription models, again, magazines, newspapers, things like that. The advertising model that you see, see little banner ads on websites and things of that nature. Affiliate uh, model where commissions for referring customers from one site to another, sales model, etc. Another one is that they don't really include here is a hybrid approach where you might have a website that, that has advertising and subscriptions. Uh, maybe you do advertising for a free based version or non subscription based version of a website or for a fee for the subscription. There are no ads. Um, but there's other combinations that you can tie together as well. There are a lot of different typical, uh, different types of typical e-commerce e business models. Some of the common ones include direct uh, online direct mar marketing, and the idea behind online direct marketing is a concept known as disintermediation. It's the removal of certain links in a supply chain. So the idea is that by selling direct, a manufacturer can reduce the cost of a good or service, and thus sell more to to the consumers. The consumers are more willing to buy because the cost has come down. Uh, tendering or bidding systems are a model in which a buyer, uh, which a buyer requests would be sellers to submit bids. The lowest bidder wins. Sometimes this is referred to as a reverse auction, and the idea is, is that a consumer places a, a the desire for a good or service uh, out there in a marketplace or an exchange, um, and you have different sellers that will bid on it, essentially lowering the price each time to try to win that particular uh, uh, sale. Electronic marketplaces or exchanges, places where you bring these together, uh, bring uh, buyers and sellers together. Viral marketing. Viral marketing is an example of electronic word of mouth, so to speak, um, through email, websites, social networking sites, uh, things like YouTube, for example. There's an example a couple of years ago of Kobe Bryant. Uh, where he was in a parking lot, and there was a, it was like he was filming it himself. He was going to do a little stunt, and he leaps up just as a car passes underneath him. You never see the car until it enters the frame on the left hand side and exits the, the frame on the right hand side. And so it's you know really kind of exhilarating to, to watch this happen because it appears to be done uh, in a very amateurish way. The reality was is it was a professional production, um, and it was meant to push. Nike shoes and people were really interested to see this happen and so people were constantly going to, to YouTube to watch this video and it was really to push Nike shoes. Another example of a typical e-commerce business model is group purchasing and this is something that's been applied in the, the, uh, the physical world of, of taking basically smaller groups of, of uh, or, or taking individuals or, or small organizations and combining together to create a larger purchasing block so that they can buy in bulk and thus save money. And it's just applying this in an online environment. The benefits and impacts of e-commerce. E-commerce is a provider of competitive advantage. Does e-commerce provide a competitive advantage for organizations that adopt e-commerce technologies? I think the jury is kind of out on this one. I, it's my personal belief, but E-commerce can, can provide a competitive advantage, but not a sustainable competitive advantage. Why? Because the technologies are available from virtually anywhere. You have to, the real key is to apply them and stay on top of them all the time. You have to constantly be re-innovating innovating and applying these technologies and new technologies as they come out in order to maintain that competitive advantage. But simply adopting an e-commerce uh, site, for example, is not enough. If you don't maintain that site, uh, it, it, it will not serve as a, as a sustainable competitive advantage. The limitations and barriers of e-commerce. There's a number of, of limitations to uh, adopting e-commerce, um, both technological as well as non-technological -techno barriers. Now, some of those barriers are resistance to new technology, uh, implementation difficulties. In some cases, it's just not easy. Security concerns, we're restoring customer data, credit card information, personal information, 
So that sometimes can be an issue. Lack of technology skills. We may not simply have the skills to be able to, to implement it. Lack of potential customers. What if our customers in our particular field don't have an interest in using computers or very limited interest? Uh, and cost. It's not cheap to set up and maintain uh, e-commerce sites. There's also ethical issues. Ethics are, are the branch of philosophy that deals with, with what is considered to be right and wrong. And there's the when, it, when we start talking about e-commerce technologies, we're monitoring. Are we so monitoring social uh, uh, networking sites for our employees and the comments that they're making? What about the privacy of our customers? What about the products that we sell? Are we selling something that some consider unethical? Tobacco products or alcohol? We're selling some of this stuff online potentially. Does that violate uh, certain ethical concerns? So those are some of the issues that we have to consider as well. That becomes a barrier. Why do we want to study e-commerce? Well, as a student, I would hope that you're interested in it because it's just fun, exciting stuff. But the reality is, is, is your degree plan, your degree should really be focusing on developing your skills in order to help you get ahead at work. Uh, so there's demand for technical and managerial e-commerce skills. So that's why e-commerce is, is particularly important. That's tied to your salaries and promotion and and all of those types of things. So the more you understand e-commerce and the role that it plays within our, within an organization, the more likely you're going to be able to be up for some of those opportunities as they become available in your, your company. So this chapter started out with the definition of e-commerce and a description of some of the various categories of e-commerce. We talked about the content and framework of e-commerce and some of the major types of e-commerce transactions. We talked about e-commerce 2.0. Remember, it's kind of an upgrade of what traditional e-commerce, uh, um, the impression that e-commerce 1.0 gave us. Um, we talked about a description of, the so of, of social commerce and social software. We talked about the elements of the digital world, the drivers of e-commerce, some of the major e-commerce business models, things like um, the, the uh, subscription-based, the, the advertising-based models. We talked about the benefits of e-commerce to organizations, consumers, and society. And then we finished up here just a second ago talking about the limitations of e-commerce. It, it can't fix everything. Uh, it's not designed to. It's, it's simply another tool that organizations have to market their goods and services.